Hello, this is Deborah with Black Education TV, and I'm going to be talking about spirituality. Spirituality is one of those things that you can't just talk about. It's something that you must experience. And unfortunately, today's environment um, has produced a lot of people that are spiritually dead, flatlined. Although there are a lot of very religious people in the world today, many different religions, thousands of different religions, literally. Christianity, Islam, Buddhism being in the tops, top religions. But people who are part of these religions are spiritually dead. More recently, you have Hebrew Israelites as well, those who are supposed to be awakened but are still spiritually dead. Now, a lot of you may not understand what I mean by that. Some people are spiritually asleep. There's a difference in being spiritually asleep and spiritually dead. Those who are spiritually asleep are those that the Most High is tugging on your heart. He is speaking to you, but you are not hearing. This is why he was saying throughout Scripture, hearken, meaning I'm speaking, but I need you to hear. I need you to pay attention. I need you to listen and follow through with what I'm saying to you. So those who are not hearing the Most High, those are spiritually asleep, but there are those who are spiritually dead. He is not speaking to them. He is not dealing with them. And the majority, the majority of the people in the world today fall in that category. Now, both of those states are very dangerous. I wouldn't want to be in a state of spiritual sleep or slumber nor would I want to be spiritually dead. Both of those are very dangerous places to be spiritually. At least with those that are asleep. If someone douses you with the right amount of spiritual water, you can awaken. But someone who's spiritually dead, they are finished. You don't want to be one of those that are spiritually dead, that are cut off. From even hearing the voice of the Most High, or should I say, cut off because He is not speaking to you. You see, so there is a lot of confusion of whether someone is spiritually asleep or spiritually dead. Those who are not of the Most High, the scripture says, those that have not the Spirit is none of His. Those that are none of His are spiritually dead. There is a certain Spirit that the Most High has put in His people. Now, even though some of Yah's people may behave a certain way, there's a spirit in them that needs to be awakened, you see, but they are not spiritually dead. If that spirit in them is quickened, then that slumber will fall off of them and they will begin to heed to his voice, you see. But those that are spiritually dead, they literally are fish, fish, they are finished. He is not speaking to them, you see. Spirituality is one of those things that a lot of people don't seek after because there has been a deception that has gone forth in the world. And that deception is religion. There are so many religious people on the planet today that they literally believe that they are spiritually alive or spiritually awakened. And most of the time they equate that to a good feeling they may have. If they get up in the morning, the sun is shining, and everything is beautiful, the birds are singing. And they say, oh, I feel good today. Today is beautiful. Look at the sky. It's just so lovely. I've literally heard people equate having the spirit to a good feeling that they feel just from being alive. Then you have those who go to church, and they are faithful to their assembly, faithful with, faithful with paying tithes, and faithful with their service to the church or to their pastor. And so therefore, they equate that to being spiritually awakened or spiritually alive. Things that we are able to do in and of ourselves in our flesh does not mean that we are spiritually awakened or alive. Spirituality goes much deeper than a lot of people can even imagine. A person that is spiritual, you can hear the voice of Elohim. He is speaking and you are hearing, you see. But it goes even deeper than that. Think about the Apostle Paul. There was a time where he went unto the third heaven, I believe it said. 
And he said, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. You see, so there are spiritual heights that you can reach that are far above anything you can imagine in the natural. Now, you don't just get those spiritual heights from going to church or being faithful to an assembly. This comes with a relationship with the Most High Yah. And I'm talking a close relationship. I'm talking about a relationship that is that of a husband and a wife almost. Very close relationship. This is a different kind of love I'm talking about. This is not a relationship. Well, I prayed today. I prayed this morning. Um, I said my little prayer. I fasted um, last month. And it's nothing like that. It's not a religious act that you can do. This is a relationship. You see how in Scripture the, the Bible referred to the Most High as Abraham's friend? It actually said that he called Abraham friend. That's what I'm talking about. And you see how David, Dawid, he said that he is a man after Yah's own heart. And you see how the Most High trusted in Job so much so to where he knew that Job would not betray him, turn on him, turn his back on him. He was so confident in his relationship with Job that he even went to Satan and he says, have you considered my servant Job a perfect and an upright man? The Most High knew that regardless, this is why Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because the Most High knew that he had that confidence in him. And so therefore he had that confidence in Job too. And so he sent Satan to him and said, have you considered him? And what did Satan say? He told the Most High, he said, um, I can't get to Job, though. You have some type of fence or barrier around him. And so the Most High pretty much said, well, if I let you get to Job, I'm going to show you something. No matter what you do to him, he will never turn his back on me. And this is why when Job's first wife came to him and said, you should just curse your God and die. She told him to curse Elohim and die. Because that's how much the Most High had laid upon him. But Job said to his first wife, I keep saying first wife because he eventually remarried. But Job said to his first wife, woman, you sound foolish. You don't sound like no wife of mine. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. How many of us have that type of relationship with the Most High Yah? Now, verbally, a lot of us will say, oh, I can do that. I would be that faithful. A lot of us will raise our hands and say, ooh, 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 me. I feel that way about the Most High. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. But most of us can't stand even the slightest storm the slightest storm. You hear what I'm saying? Most of us can't stand the slightest storm. Anytime the wind blows, your foundation shakes, the earth quivers, you're falling out, you're giving up, can't take a thing. This is why I say spirituality is one of those things that you have to fight for something you have to seek, something you have to experience. You have a lot of people talking about a lot of things, but they have yet to experience some of these things. You have some people that have studied the Bible from cover to cover, and they can talk about all of the contents within. But as far as having an experience with the Most High Yah, they do not have an experience with him. They do not have a relationship with him. They have not been spiritually intimate. They have not been filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. And so what they are doing is literally giving you, I'm going to say, surface knowledge. 
basically something that they've re read and that they're able to explain somewhat. But they can't really explain it to you in a spiritual sense because the scripture says spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And although a person may be able to talk about spirituality just from what they've read, it's a difference when a person talks about spirituality that they have experienced. Not something that they've read or something that was taught to them, but something that they've experienced. That conversation or that explanation is going to be far different than the person who's just telling you what they read or what their college professor taught them or what their pastor or evangelist may have taught them or what they heard someone talking about in passing. That conversation is going to be much different than with a person who has actually experienced spirituality or had a personal relationship with the Most High God. I would like to encourage those of you, especially those of you who are joining us in this prayer, this ongoing prayer, because the scripture says, the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much, and that we are to pray without ceasing. Prayer is not one of those things where you just want to get your time in, you see. It's not one of those things where you just want to plug in just for a few moments, a few weeks, or a few days, or even a few years. Prayer is one of those things that you have to be committed to. You see how your body is committed to breathing because you need it without it? You die? You see how it's an automatic thing? You don't have to tell your body to breathe. You don't have to tell your blood to flow. You see how it's automatic? That's how your relationship with the Most High has got to be. It's got to get to the point where it's automatic, where in the morning you get up and you say, this is the day that Yahuwah hath made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Or good morning, Abba Yah. In the morning when I rise, the first thing on my mind is the Most High. And I thank Him for letting me see another day. Before we go to bed at night, thank you for getting us through this day. As we travel from place to place, thank you for blessing our going out and our coming in. When every aspect of your life is focused on thanking the Most High, thanking Him for the food that you eat, the air that you breathe, the fact that you have movement in your body, because the scripture says, it is in Him we live, in Him we move, and in Him we have our being. When you get to the point where your focal point is thanking Him for His goodness, one writer said, when I think of the goodness of Yahushua and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. That is the point we need to be in, family. We need to be to the point where regardless of what's happening in this world, we know that this world is w wicked. We know that the hearts of men and women are desperately wicked. But one thing we also know is that the Most High is good. Every day that you are able to open your eyes and you have blood running warm in your veins, He is worthy to be praised. Don't treat Him like He is some religious ritual that you've got to follow through with. Don't think of the Most High as some task that you've got to put behind you. Something that you've got to clear off your schedule. Don't think of your service to him in that way. But think of him as the very air that you breathe. There's a song by a group. And the song, in the song they says, I can't live a day without you. Talking about the Most High. I can't live a day without you. There's no night and there's no morning. Without your loving arms to hold me, I can't live a day without you. 
That's how I feel about the Most High. And I'm so thankful that at a very early age, He captured my heart. He captured my heart. If there's one thing that I want to pass on to my children, I want to teach my children and those who are under the sound of my voice, that it's very important to have a relationship with the Most High that is outside of anyone else. My relationship with the Most High is not hinged on my husband's relationship with the Most High. If my husband were to decide tomorrow that I don't love the Most High anymore, I don't want to deal with him anymore, if my husband were to decide any of that, he would be on his own. I wouldn't follow him into that pit because my relationship with the Most High was here before I even met my husband. And it has gone, grown stronger since. Because there is something that I know and I understand about the Most High. He is the author and finisher of everything in my life. Everything. And so again, talking about spirituality, family, is one of those things that you have to seek after. And you can't be slothful with it. You can't be lazy with it. It can't be one of those things where you feel like it's a burden to you. Understand something. Understand that the very life that you live, the very breath that you breathe belongs to him. Our life and our living belongs to him. This earthly life we have is just a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. But the question always remains, where will you spend eternity? Eternity is that thing that we need to nurture. Making sure that our calling is an election sure. Making sure that we are not falling into religion. That we don't become so super religious that our relationship with the Most High is non-existent. And that you are spiritually dead or spiritually asleep. For those that are the children of the Most High Yah, His Word says, it is high time to awake out of your sleep. Now, some people know that they are spiritually asleep. Most that are spiritually dead, they don't know because there's nothing there. They are completely oblivious to the things of Yah. But some of them can be very religious though, very religious. Very religious. Faithful as all get out to their church and to their auxiliaries and the functions of the church, usher board, choir member, tither, good deed doer, I mean all of those things. But spiritually there is nothing there. But as one writer said, for those who are spiritually asleep, revive us again. Those of us who are seeking after the Most High, those of us who know that there is a worldwide awakening of the children of the Most High, yeah. we ought to cry out to the Most High during this time of prayer and say, Father, revive us again. Revive us again. Because you know there's a point in time in which the scripture says, O Zion, put on thy strength. He says that we're going to mount up on wings like an eagle. We shall run and not be weary. We shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Those are the days and the times that I'm looking forward to. Those are the times I'm looking forward to when the Most High pours out his Ruach HaKadosh on his sons and his daughters. And when we begin to walk in the newness of life, walk in the power and the authority of the Most High Yah, not walking in religion, not walking in self-righteousness, not walking in pride, but walking in great boldness granted to us by the Most High Yah. That is what I'm looking forward to. So I would like to encourage those of you under the sound of my voice who are not spiritually dead, but those who may just be asleep, those who may be spiritually weary or tired, you're drifting or whatever. I want to encourage you to join us in prayer daily, seeking after the Most High, seeking after His will for your life, 
walking in the newness of life, not seeking to be something great in the eyes of men, but walking in humility and allowing the Most High to raise you up. If you seek to be elevated, He's going to abase you. But if you walk in humility, He will lift you up. He will raise you up. Let the Most High do it, and it will be done indeed. But when you do it of yourself, you're preparing yourself for a fall. And as always, family, thank you for tuning in. I want you all to know that I love you dearly. I'm grateful for my brothers and my sisters. And during this moment of prayer, that's one of those things that I want to pray, pray and cry out to the Father for, is that our people that are spiritually asleep would awaken. That you all would begin to see and know and understand what it is we must do in this hour. Those of you who are already awakened, your prayer should be that you can reach those in your family or in your communities, those who will hear. Don't waste your time with those who don't want to hear. The scripture says that when you bring the word to someone, you enter into a city and you bring them the word. If they will not hear you, shake the dust off of your feet and keep it moving. But those who will hear, let us pray that the Most High will stir them, that he will send forth his Ruach HaKadosh to trouble the waters so that they will understand what time we are in. It is high time to awake out of our sleep. I love you, family. And with that, I will say shalom.